Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. combed my hair because it was getting a little bleh. cool hey everyone we're live hello hello uh well let's make sure everyone can hear me I you can hear me my hair just for you guys here let's do this bayonet thing coming out on the side. yeah you know what i've got Woo. The, the problem <laughs> is, is i have very curly hair so <laughs> just the, wait the bottom inch of my hair just Okay. I yeah, got 90s this. women wanted, uh, paid a oh, lot of money one. to get my level hang of Hang on, hang on. Let's do this, and let's do <laughs> this. God, I wish that would stop resetting all the time. Okay. Oh. Uh, I have pizza. Good. Okay. Hello. All right. Welcome to the show. I'm going to take a bite of this pizza that I didn't slice in half like I should have. Okay. Hello, everyone. I noticed that. Hi. My name is Eris, and this week, everything is about me. Week after week, I sit here and I wax poetical about the various verisimilitudes of my podcasting brethren, but no more. Here I sit before you, lighter than a hurricane and with more teeth than a platypus. Oh. I also have more hair than a skeleton. I have eyes. Two of them. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me right. Two eyes. My brain is full of material that is something akin to, but possibly not exactly, brains. My name is Eris. And this week, everything's coming up Eris. So here we go. It's the Eris station. Eris. Oh, I'm Eris. No, I'm Eris as well. I'm Eris. No, I'm Eris. Stop trying to take well, the one week that I get. <laughs> this was it. <laughs> All right. Hello, All right. everyone. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the relay station. Uh... Sorry we missed last week. There was an orbital launch when I had to stream for eight hours. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, I hope some or a lot of you joined me for that. It um, it was a a fantastic launch to watch. It was. It was. Great. Yep. Oh, I was watching. I was just watching in the living room. I had the stream yeah. up. That's why I wasn't yeah. chatting because I was brawled out on the couch. Thank you very yeah. much, Sid. I appreciate the company. I, it was good. I wanted to. I wanted to hear the rocket go up in surround sound. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> that was a thing and a half. Yep. Um. Yeah. Things happened in Star Citizen this week. Um. Uh. You guys. Uh. Those of you who joined us early are probably going to wonder if we're going to talk about anything else that happened this week, and the answer is yes, but later. Yes. I am low volume. Oh, that's interesting. I will. Oh. oh, I can. I can um, play around with that. Well, I. I think it's also low on my end. So. So no, we'll do you're that good. For... I'm Sid, okay. I have okay. a. I have, There's there's a PC downstairs as well. That's what I was watching on. Okay. I just wanted to. You know, couch lounge mode, sir. Wanted to shiver. Eat garbage food and watch large metal tubes fly into space yeah pretty much that's basically what we were doing how's it going shiver i smell time you smell time a lot smell what is it time. what does it smell like like what which purple. time though it which smells time? like purple interesting because one if you if you smell time it depends on what time you're talking about. Because one of them just sounds like you're making a delicious Italian dish. The the other one is a little bit concerning. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's also... sage advice. <laughs> uh, oh, 
Um, Can't think of any more spice jokes. <laughs> <We're trying. laughs> so what you could say is, that's shallot. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. This is the direction the show is taking. I'm, I'm already all spiced out. Um. Uh, all right. Welcome to the relay. Stage. You got any more? We're gonna, we're gonna, gonna go now. You with the news today. <laughs> um, please don't be salty in the chat. Um, paprika. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naming the blue characters at this point. The, the, there's quite an obvious one. It's your turn, Eric. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh. <laughs> so should we start? Uh, should we start talking about? Well, b before we do that, I'm gonna put this up because, uh, as always, I really hope that you guys pepper us with some questions. Um, yes, we need to be peppered. Please pepper us. I don't like. We need it to get. Going. We need it to get spicy later. <sighs> it's. Oh, it's gonna get spicy. Don't it's gonna worry get, about that. It's gonna get spicy. Um, Don't even worry about that. <sighs> okay. Uh, where do we want to start? The today? beginning. Um. Boom. Uh, what's the beginning? Uh, well. Um, one day, uh, the we should probably... esteemed uh, director and creator of uh, the Wing Commander franchise of video games decided he wanted to make a new uh, ambitious PC game uh, and decided to host a crowdfunding campaign to make it happen. Oh, okay. That was the beginning of everything. I mean, it's the beginning of this. Of this? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> I suppose so. All right. He asked what the beginning was, so I told him. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome so, to the show. There, there was some news happenings this week. Lots of cool new features. Are these last our two weeks, we two missed weeks. a week. Oh yeah, we did. That's yep. right. Oh yeah, so, we had spaceships last week. We I had lots of spaceships. <laughs> I forgot completely yeah. that that was on Saturday. Yeah. We had real spaceships last week, which is pretty fucking cool, to be frank. Yep. <laughs> there hasn't it been a, a, a new real spaceship in a long time. It was. Um, so, we had Invictus launch week, um, which took place over the course of more than a week, I believe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so that was like the inverse uh, and out of verse. Like, hey, we're the military, look at us, we're cool. Um, deal with the UE Navy, and that brought us uh, a new a new ship, which was actually a ground vehicle, the uh, Origin G twelve, um, which is a cool bug looking thing. Um, I like it. Origins trying to hold, or trying to uh, shoulder their way into the uh, Ursa market there, mm -hmm. and Did they uh, pick one up. I like it, and I'll probably get one, but I didn't actually buy one. I wanted, right now. I wanted something to match my 890. Mm -hmm. um, so is it all right if I slide into funding right now? Because it kind of flows. Oh, uh, give me. I, I just need to set up. Only the, if you say um, that sentence again in your sexiest voice. And I didn't. I don't have I a sexy one. voice, Shiver. That's why I'm still single. <laughs> I didn't buy one outright. I, I upgraded my Cyclone. <laughs> uh, yes. At least I tell myself that's the reason. <laughs> uh, you um, can slide into funding if you would like. Okay. So, I know this sounds like hyperbole, but it really isn't. It's this not, is the, and it's insane. The, the most... This is... this uh, Between... May 21st and June 2nd was the most important, most intense and important period of Star Citizen crowdfunding ever, to date. 
Um, they made somewhere on the order of about $15 million, maybe 13, somewhere in that range in about, what is that? About two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and two of those days, um, two of those days, 24 hour periods exceeded the entire total of the original Kickstarter. Twice. Um, yeah, tw it happened twice. Um, which was May, uh, May twenty seventh and May thirty first. Uh, May twenty seventh was, it was May or November. <laughs> Everybody thought it was November. <laughs> totally. Um, it was May. That's a. I, I love that joke. Thank you, Shiver. <laughs> You're my favorite. Um, so. May 27th hit $2.25 million, and um, May 31st was $2.47 million in a single day. Um, they had capital ships for sale. They had all sorts of other ships for sale. They were doing uh, daily ship sales. Very, This is very reminiscent of like an anniversary sale um, yeah. that is normally in November. Um, I wonder what made them decide May. to do it now. We've um, never had something like this in the spring. No. I'm wondering, some because some people wondered if the reason they got so much money this time was because they decoupled it from the holiday season, and I wonder if that was the part of it. That's stimulus checks. true. And also stimulus checks were provided by several <laughs> well, governments. That, that's so, true as well. Um, Not a bad plan. Stimulus, <laughs> stimulus well, checks going out to a bunch of PC gamers who by virtue of PCs being more expensive, tend to have more stable jobs and can use more of their fungible income on things like ships. And then you give them $2,000 or whatever free money when they haven't lost a job, then where does that money yeah. go? I mean, might as well spend it on spaceships. So another point to that, though, that kind of works as against it is that... Actually, no, they talked about having developed that building beforehand. I was thinking it would take them a while to build all that stuff. We've so, used it before. But yeah, I was just, they actually did have that building up there before anyway. So no, they could have thrown it together fairly quickly. Um, But yeah, it, uh, either so, way, it went spectacularly well for them. To, um, to, if I'm going to speculate, which is what we're here to do, uh, it's what we're hello. paid to do. Um. I would speculate that the reason that they had Invictus launch week when they did is planning and preparation for CitizenCon. Because they need, because of COVID, they need to find other ways of doing inverse stuff. It was a dry run. Let's see how, what we can do, what we can pull off. Uh, and mm -hmm. it just so happened to land shortly after stimulus checks went out, which is... Like it just it, nice things bonus. just aligned, mm -hmm. but I it, it I think they did it early, which they haven't done before to test out to see what they're going to do with CitizenCon because what's going to happen with yeah. CitizenCon? Well, that's a good question, that, and yeah, they're going to have to. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people working very hard to figure out what to do for CitizenCon. Yeah, um, I know, I know. We already they already said it's not going to be a full CitizenCon. They can't do that, but I'm still curious what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um so regardless to do the panels. Yes, I would like the, I would like them done. to do that, but I don't know if they're going to. We'll that see. Can easily be done uh without so, a physical event. While that was a huge event, as you can see from the chart that's up on the screen, it was not completely unforeseen as the rest of this year had been going spectacularly well already anyway. Yeah. Um, but can you throw up the other picture? Yeah, working on it. You can see that even though it their year-over-year -year funding had been increasing this year, there was a massive spike for May. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, um, it's an interesting thing to watch. Um, it looks like they're probably going to make at least 70 million dollars this year and last year was their best year at 47 so it's wildly out of keeping with what we've seen and as you as i've said on this show about four four hundred and seventy thousand <laughs> times over the last five years that's a very specific number yeah i know um it's got a counter funding 
their funding for about five years was extremely stable as you can see it was basically just like the same every year um this year is not the same uh a lot of people have been asking why and i don't have a good answer um I've gone through a million different scenarios in my head. At, at first, in January and February, I thought it was just because CitizenCon last year was really good. But it, it, that, that doesn't seem to explain it now. I have a theory. I have What's a your theory? theory? Um, I think there's a lot of people, um, and even my roommate included, who were waiting to play Star Citizen a little bit more seriously. Uh, until full full persistence was added okay. into the game, and we have that for the most part as as much as you could have in an alpha or beta environment, where yeah. there there's the possibility of a reset, but uh, a patch doesn't just erase everything you've done. Um, the game the game as a whole <clears throat> is just getting somewhat more fleshed out and somewhat more stable. There are gameplay loops now that you can engage in, which There's many in fact. For for years there were not. Like it's Yep. It seems like it's becoming more of a Dude. game than it ever was before. And that like it tells people that, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll give it a shot now. Maybe I'll I've got nothing to do in, in covid land anyway I, let's hop into star citizen way more often than i used to um at least i probably poke my head in like once a week at least yeah sure and any thoughts for that you on like the funding match i wish i could have slept better last night oh okay <laughs> i'm sorry my friend uh have you tried melatonin yeah it doesn't work on me that sucks have that you tried lots and lots of wine either. I've tried hitting myself over the head with a frying pan. That worked for a couple of hours. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a good. That's a good way. Um, one yeah, thing to oh, not try. Bastards with bloody big motherfucking cars because they've got tiny little fucking penises. So they have to buy these cars with fucking exhausts that are bigger than my fucking head. Stand outside the fucking window and go boom, boom, boom. Turn off the fucking car. Turn it back on. Turn it off. Turn it back on. For no fucking reason. And just walk off. <laughs> anyway, what the fuck's your problem, you fucking piece of shit? We got those people except instead of cars, it's trucks. <laughs> yeah, I have that too, with a huge giant diesel truck that starts outside my door every morning. Yeah. Uh, we, were, we finally moved uh, to a place that isn't on a busy street for the first time since I've n lived outside of my parents' home ever to like 10 years <laughs> <laughs> not living next to a busy street it's wonderful that's awesome I yeah. live on a build busy street and it's wonderful in Canada busy streets are important do you know why? yeah because snow will <laughs> they, get they get plowed they get plowed first Permanent, permanently place you under a lockdown yes. until winter is over. I I will never again not live on a bus route. Yeah. The fact that it's a bus route means it's the first road plowed, and it's... Yes! Uh, okay, so funding is going well. They are making money hand over fist, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they're basically any type of... I would say pretty much any type of like money concerns that anybody had about Star Citizen can be basically put to bed. They have enough money now to do whatever they want. So <clears throat> let's. Uh, are you guys okay to go through some of the stuff that that money is is yes, yes. putting out? I was literally about to say the same show exact and tell segue. <laughs> I thought it was a good segue. It is a good segue. Great. Yeah. Let's, let's see where see our what, money's going. Let's see where our money's going. It's going pretty places. Uh, so, yeah, um, we're, we're going to cover a lot of stuff because uh, we missed last week. So, first of all, freaking chain lightning guns. <laughs> I yes, love this. Please. I love it so much. I love these guns so much. Um, and I love and, the whole electron damage thing. And, yeah, and... Like on top of this, they were talking about it. Like there's there's going to be a new FPS weapon type that is stun damage. So yeah. the, um, mm -hmm. not just like the distortion guns on a ship will shut down electronics, 
um, we're going to be able to do the same thing with uh, people's nervous systems, which is always, always good, a good thing. <laughs> One of the things they talked about a lot in the show off here is, um, and I really loved, is the all the moving parts on this gun. There's so many moving parts, yeah. and it's oh, no. awesome. Sorry. It looks so cool. I I really really love the back end of these guns. It's the the wood stocks and like so clean and lovely. Uh, unfortunately, then you get to the front and they've got this weird dildo at the front that I just don't think belongs there. It has four prongs. There, it's a um, very weird. Dildo. Dildo. <laughs> yes, it is weird. <laughs> That's what conducts the electricity. Like I don't. I don't. Foils on there. I really don't like the front end of these guns. I you know, love the you back know, like, end. Like Mirage, he's got all those all those thingies yeah. on him. That's what yeah. helps him oh, turn looks, invisible. Looks Same thing. Like that. Yeah. Same thing. <clears throat> Sorry that it has like... to be based on some semblance of science, David. <laughs> <laughs> Come I'd on, like science it sucks. Looks fallouty. It does look a little fallouty. Yes, it does. It does. Yes. Um, it reminds me of the of the alien pistol a little bit. It that actually in Fallout Three. It reminds me a fair bit also of uh, crap, Outer Worlds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some of the guns totally. in that. Yeah. Um, I really do like I like the lightning effect too, and it's I mean it's obviously still pretty early, but it looks great. That's uh, now, they're just letting me be an elemental shaman in more than one game now. So they, yeah, <laughs> now I do I do have one question because, uh, like they have made this sniper rifle. It seems like they've made it hella powerful in that you hit one person and you hit all the people neck like that is. It is very powerful. It is. It's also extremely loud and flashy. Yes. yes. You and will definitely not be able to hide if you're firing that thing. Yeah. If but you do you need it, to hide? You exactly where that bullet came from. So if you miss, you're done. Wait, yeah. in space. Skill wins. But um, I... Uh, sure. Go ahead, Shiver. I mean, it's got a limited range on the chain on it. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you... If you're all huddled together as players, it's not just it. chain lightning that's going to yeah. kill you. A well-placed <laughs> grenade, or worse. Mm -hmm. This has wizard. much more range than a grenade. So, oh yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on a small tangent about Star Wars for a second. Um, that I never a, happens. Are you, <laughs> Jake, I didn't listen. think you liked Star Wars. You've never talked no, about it before. It, it's the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it hasn't been good since Jar Jar was in it. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mean, that's one of my favorite Star Wars movies. So. Um, I mean, dude, look who you're talking to. OK, I know. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, I am of the opinion that uh, in Star Wars, uh, all of everyone's problems could have been solved and are solved in some instances with a well-placed thermal detonator. Every time. If you have a thermal detonator at the right time, you will win whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> Leia shows up at Jabba's palace. She's like, yo, I've got demands. And Jabba's like, ha, oh, who are you? And she pulls out a thermal detonator. Um, and everybody's <laughs> like, well, guess we got to do what she says now. In like Rogue One, they use thermal detonators to blow up that base. Um, literally everything... If, you you got to combat grouping together in small enclosures because explosives exist and it will solve all your problems because people are dumb. That's what I'm saying. So what I want to count or not counter, but add on to that is I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Rainbow mm -hmm. Six Siege is a just uber tactical, uh, like, one How shot, you're dead. How many times you died to C4? To what? <laughs> to C4. Uh, only twice, actually. Oh. <laughs> C4 is not used often in Siege. Oh, man. What? They always get me with C4. I'm, yeah? I'm good with you shooting bullets at me. And then C you'll just put a C4 on the ground and I'm <laughs> dead. <so. laughs> um, but a gun like this, like, it's a sniper rifle, right? Great at long ranges, mm -hmm. 
but well, there's a couple it, different ones, but yeah, yeah. But this this is good at long ranges, but because it has the spread to multiple people, it's also useful in close quarters because in close quarters, your enemies have to be grouped together, right? And then you get to hit them, stun them, and have your way with them, essentially. Uh, so it's uh, I think it's going to be a uh, pretty pretty badass gun. Um, uh, yeah. I'm excited for this thing. Okay, I wanna I wanna move on though because we got many many videos. We have a lot of things. Uh, landings. The old way of landing landing sucked. sucked, and the old landing yeah. zone sucked because there's this giant red thing that shows up and is like, "Don't go here or you die." I agree, I and mean, it always felt like a placeholder to me. Always. Oh, yeah. Always since it when it first came out, I was like, "Oh, this is a thing to just prevent people from griefing in the meantime." Yeah, yep. that's how it always felt to me. And what they've done is what they originally showed in like 2014. I think was it 2014, 2015. May have been a little later than that. I think it was 15 um, or 16 even. It it was either it, it okay. No, it was definitely 15, because it was one of the last times CIG, I think, ever went to either PAX or South by Southwest, where they showed Art Corp for the first time. And right. uh, the, uh, like, the Connie comes in and looks at literally one of these. And, yeah. like, that was the original thing that they showed years and years and years and years ago. Um, and they finally did it, and I'm very happy about it because it's it, so much better. <laughs> it looks a lot cleaner, and also it's going to help people like me that can't fly. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> um, some people mentioned, and I do agree with them, that uh, that they might maybe should tone down the brightness of the, uh, the tunnel. Um, I mean... They make changes but, to the UI uh, literally all the time. Yeah. Um, I, um, like I think that's recently, probably not. I think that's probably uh, a pretty in, uh, insignificant change to make. Yeah. Um, I'd like imagine recently, you'll be able to customize changed, the... It changed Sorry, my life. A What's change that? that they made. Uh, they added drop shadows to ship UI. <laughs> it's so much better. <laughs> I can see it. That's, that's awesome. I figure... Like the, uh, the ship UI is great was great before if you never went anywhere if you're just <laughs> hanging out in the void of space <laughs> one thing now that I, it's functional do you one think thing that, they do need to eventually fix and hopefully that it's on their like roadmap here with these improvements is um we need a better ui for actually landing Yes, like oh, the part, the part where you go down and touch down on the ground, because it's 100%. currently quite difficult. Um, yeah, I mean they used to have that thing on the MFD where you would have a very miniature display yeah. of your ship and going down. Where's that? I want that. Yeah, back. what happened to that? Yeah, that it, was awesome. I think it went away because it probably broke when they did something. Oh, but you know what they it was? To, they I remember when back. we lost it. You know when we lost it is when they changed the flight model. Oh. Uh, yeah. Ass faces. Bring it back. But so one thing I'm noticing <laughs> is in, in these clips, <laughs> like the the green uh, displays on the ship are the same green as the boxes in the UI. So I'm wondering if at some point <gasps> these boxes that show your flight landing won't be the same color and brightness as the ship UI, which they will be able like it's customized by ship and by preference and all that so apparently you can change your own ui including that yeah. shit to whatever yeah. you want if you want a red one you can have a red one if you want a blue one you can have a blue yeah. one any kind I, you want as long as it's green yeah so i wouldn't worry <laughs> about it's too bright or anything like they're gonna <sighs> as long as it's not pink they'll let you do anything um was, this was PAX. I want to say this is PAX. It is PAX. Um, Water Buffalo is right. This is what I was thinking of, and it was in 2014, actually. Oh, really? Wow. Um, 
I remember because this is one of the things that sold me. On 2014 was so long ago, guys. I know. Uh, <laughs> it, so, so I wasn't sold on the Kickstarter because literally all they had was some images, and I had never played Wing Commander before. And the only game I played was Freelancer, and I liked it, but I didn't make the connection. Um, so then I saw that, and I saw the Imagine trailer. Uh, praise be, uh, Mr. Simon, yours yep, 100, yes. wherever the hell you are. Still um, out there somewhere. I think he joined the military, you. actually. Uh, really? He was always in the military. Yeah, I think he, I, I think he like, went full in went I think he was okay i don't know anyway yeah hey, that that Simon, that trailer was if you hear this dearest friend uh thank you for introducing me to star citizen and many many others um your trailer is legendary yeah. at this yep. point so um but yes and ironically um uh water buffalo i was thinking of this video there are no there are no landing splines at all in the video oh there's autopilot uh also, so it's what? amazing think... how much different our corp looks in this video i know <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, <wow>. um and <laughs> and chris i think it was chris roberts who was like describing it at the time like he said oh we're gonna have like ui that helps you land and stuff like that so maybe that was it maybe that's what i was thinking of but i love the old connie fans the uh, no, so what we got on screen right it's now? It's totally fine. We were thinking of the exact same <laughs> thing, and that's okay. What what we got? We got the vibes going. One of the things that they announced that they're working on adding soon, hopefully, is uh, trading between players. So being yes. able to send money to other players. Uh, yes. About time. I love yep. that there's taxes on any money you send. Yep, money sinks, baby, balances that economy. Uh, um, much like if you mail somebody money in, um, in if you use PayPal, PayPal, World Warcraft, uh, the post office takes cut. Uh, now, CIG, if you're listening to this, um, please let me just hand somebody money. Um, person? I shouldn't have to send it through a system every time. I want to be able to just send money. Although that is the kind of the antithesis of what a imperial credit would do, because that's yeah. kind of the whole point is to track and tax money as it transfers between people. That's what cryptocurrency is. That's literally what all Though there of is, that there, is. There is a big so, worry yeah, about that, because then how so do I steal your money? Devil's advocate, your own counter argument. Surely the black market are just going to be all like, there's a cash and it can't be traced. Right. That's that's what I'm saying is I want there to be that method somewhere. Um, whether that's just me like taking a physical item and handing it to somebody. Maybe. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I have an idea now. So what if all currency is tracked, right? But property isn't. So the black market becomes this weird nebulous barter hey, system. It could be like Firefly and you're like trading cows and beagles and little yeah. uh, wobbly headed dolls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool with this. Like in the expanse, the 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 <laughs> captain of the uh of of the Canterbury with his little glass thingies he's got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the partner economy, man. I think we're on to something. I think we're on to something. Would, what would you be your preferred method of uh, barter? Shiver? Donuts. Donuts? donuts. Hey, good one. Mm, the fresher the donut, the more valuable it is. But I think, new, I think, I'd, go with, uh, I think I'd go with Nuka-Cola bottles. So, story time. Not Once the upon caps, a time, the bottles. <laughs> Once upon a time in high school, one of our uh, assignments was to develop a new country, right? Yeah. And and you had to design, you had to you know design the country and design um, you know economy and system of government and way people are elected and all of that. And we sat down and we were like, all right, so 
the number one, all, everything in this country and economy is based on babies. Babies are uh, eaten. Baby mm. bones are used as currency. Babies are mm. used as currency. Babies are used to build houses. Are, and the so, leader, so babies... the ruler of the country is whoever can drink the most mercury and survive. We all wow. got A pluses. Wow. <laughs> we aced it. Um, question. Because... Question. This explains uh, a lot about Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. Uh, are the ba is it like babies are gold and bones are coppers? Like dollars and cents? Is that is that what we're doing? No, because babies are are food and also slave labor. Because you make the babies do all the work. But also and then when they die, you use their bones ah, to build things. Yeah. Okay. You do realize yeah. babies don't have very many bones, right? That's what makes them valuable. <laughs> Fair enough. All I know is we got an A plus on the assignment. <laughs> Yo, man, all we had to do in sure economics just was just start a you. business. Oh, uh, God, that was amazing. <laughs> Love you, Shiver. <laughs> we had a cool, we had a cool business we did in economics class. So literally the entire semester of economics uh, was teaching us how business works, and our final was we had to like basically have a proposal that we could literally take to a bank and start the business if we were not sixteen years old. So like, I gotta it, it, say, yeah. I don't understand this. No, this is awesome. This is literally the Resident Evil 4 inventory system, and I could not be happier about really? it. Really? Okay. Yes. That's what this is. Because it's like auto-sorting, and I don't like it. Yes. It, it's it's auto-sorting. It So, basically, CIG is making the assumption that in the future, you're going to have some level of artificial intelligence that will optimize your storage for you. So, when you place the item in your bag or on your person it's going to optimize it uh for the for the bag Available and whatever space. other items are inside it cool okay but it's I not could doing not it be more excited about this this looks it's great. leaving gaps where it shouldn't it's what it's leaving gaps where it shouldn't it's not doing it efficiently right. it, it, it's yeah. a proof did you concept. listen to what they said when they were doing this it bothers me did you listen did you to what they said the when they were doing this? I did. It They're still like, bothers hey, me. Hey, this isn't going to be the real thing. Don't think too hard about it's this. This is, just, this is just something we're playing around with. I, I know it's just something they're playing around with, but still I'm watching it and being like, no, no, so, that, that, that hole there. It's My OCD is angry at OCD this concept, is... okay? <laughs> my OCD no, can't take it. Is. I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm very... So, one of the things I really like about Star Citizen and one of the things I really like about uh, uh, Resident Evil and games like those is that uh, inventory has physical space. Um, it's not just a, a bag of holding, uh, like a void storage, basically. Yep. Um, it you, you have to take in consideration how much an item uh, takes up space. I hate weight encumbrance. I yeah. hate it. I don't know why, because they're very similar concepts, but for some reason, I just don't like weight mechanics at I all. Like it, I like it to be both. Um, I, see, I don't think I've ever played a game that has both. There are very, very few that do. I have, but it's rare, yeah. Yeah, but both is, what? in my opinion, the way to go. What? What game has both? I'm trying to remember now, but I'm sure I've seen, I've played a game that has both. Uh, well, think, I'm thinking it something like and weight. I'm thinking something like Escape from Tarkov. I haven't played Tarkov. Chat, help I'll me get out. back to you when I can remember. Yeah. Uh, okay. What else we got? Uh, they they're making they're making reentry prettier. We saw this yep. a couple um, of weeks so ago, but... I, you know what made me really happy about this whole thing? What? You can see other players entering the atmosphere yes. now. Yes. Yes. Which oh is my God. awesome. God, it's... Dude, um, listen. Imagine being on the surface of a planet, and you just see, like, 15 
fiery streaks coming <laughs> from well, the Jake, sky. Jake, you're thinking, like, you're thinking oh. too small. Imagine being on the surface of a planet and Test shows up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't um, see anything. So, Why is it so bright? So, <laughs> I think, so uh, I actually want to talk about this for a second because um, there's a lot. So so remember how people are like, oh, like a hundred ships in an instance. That doesn't sound like very much. Listen. <laughs> Did you guys see the space battles that happened against the Javelin in these last few weeks? It's ridiculous. And that's with the 50 player cap. Yep. It's literally like the Battle of Coruscant. <laughs> I was blown away. Yeah, and we're only at the beginning. We're only at the beginning of this. When they, like, even if they doubled the player cap, imagine, like, the absolute ridiculousness of, like, just six hammerheads, ten retaliators five vanguards and like 20 hornets showing up just <laughs> woof, they're, they're all just there just a whole fleet and you're just like what it's funny because everyone's like oh you know 50 players is nothing 100 oh. players is nothing but when you actually think about no, it it's like dude, a lot of players it's crazy at the scale we're talking about with the vehicles we're talking about it's ridiculous it's ridiculous um, Water Buffalo, I'm going to find you some good stuff. Give me just a sec. Uh, Shiver, did you see this fire propagation? I didn't see this bit, no. Okay, what do you think of this? It looks they're, awesome. they're, they're talking about, um, so basically fire, both the fire and the smoke are voxelized and they are running on their own. And this is, I mean, this is again, early, early viz concepting, but It's pretty hot stuff. <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to mention about this is they, just in case anybody's seeing this for the first time, this test is about the fire propagation, not how it looks or yeah. um, any of that. It's um, the pure code behind it. it. Just um, the how it company. spreads, how it spreads through the hab as it's going. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I um, think it spreads it. pretty nicely. I and they're love also that like the smoke effects and the fire effects are separate. That's yeah. great. It allows for a lot more flexibility. It is also funny that they're like, yeah, we uh, we also don't know how fire in zero gravity is going to work. We'll figure that out. That's going to be cool. I can't wait. For it's that. not the same, by the way. It yeah. doesn't look <laughs> the same at all. The NASA's been doing some um, experiments with it which is terrifying for them because they work really really hard to make sure there's no fire anywhere in space um, now they need to know. but actually there is there is a demo that they're doing not yet they haven't done it yet but soon nasa is doing a demo on orbit in like an actual contained satellite that is they're going to examine fire in space and how to put it out um which is so which are both important uh no <laughs> <laughs> well, it would work, but it'd also kill everyone inside. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm currently watching Star Trek Discovery for the first time. Awesome. And uh, there is an episode with uh, uh, one of my favorite characters in Star Trek, uh, Captain Mud. Yes, and, he's great. Uh, he is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> he is pure chaos, and I love him. Um, but... Uh, at the beginning of the episode, I'm not going to say what the concept of the episode is, because that's kind of a spoiler. Um, at the beginning of the episode, there is a party on board the Discovery. Um, yeah, Shiver, I'm I'm not going to say what the episode is about, because it's really cool. Um, you might end up repeating yourself. <laughs> yes. Um, so in this party, there's just a guy walking around with sparklers in the mess hall of the discovery and i'm like what are you doing you have an open flame <laughs> on board a spaceship yeah oh 
Hey guys, Microtech's getting a big store. It's the Apple store. It, it's literally the Apple store in New York City. Never been. Have you been to New York City? Yeah, I have actually. Oh. I went in high school. It's cool. It was. Uh, I like. I like Boston as a city more than I do New York. I I enjoyed New York, but uh, my my has more character. My favorite time from New York was actually like we we stayed at a hostel and we all just mm. hang out hung out on the hostel rooftop uh, at night and drank with the other people that were staying at the hostel and met like random people and that was the best part of it actually exploring new york city was kind of ass um yeah i hear new yeah. york so good they named it twice they did new york new york uh okay so guess we got nothing to say about the microtech retail store <laughs> it's not cargo decks uh, i do once oh, oh okay done. do you want me to go back um yes but, go back to the beginning of it but we're okay. on we're on cargo decks now yeah, Move. tough. Go back to the beginning of the microtech. <laughs> Big circle. Um, I actually really love this space. I mean, microtech is already gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous. But this is I'm actually really looking forward to exploring this because it looks amazing. For and though some, just the visual design is so nice. For some reason, I didn't expect them to go downstairs. I expected them to go upstairs. No, That's actually why. yeah yeah I understand yeah why is that uh, the interest is the entrance to the store is on the upper floor as you can see right there oh yeah okay hmm I like it yeah I for yeah. for people asking I think I went uh before the New York real estate hit like peak stupid um and mm. there were multiple hostels like in downtown New York that you could stay at for like. 40 bucks a night oh that's nice yeah uh, airbnb I, like Bree serena said is is that now yeah oh yeah uh inflation has affected it but it's it's still like it's still less expensive than staying at a hotel in new york yeah i like that you're uh repping your work there man <laughs> what what i like oh, that you're shirt? repping your work your shirt <laughs> yeah i do like I, I've taken so much merch from from work. <laughs> I have like I have like seven or eight oh, shirts awesome. from work. That's great. Um, I send them to clients. That's literally my job. <laughs> I send t-shirts to people. <gasps> Sun Java. Um, hey, after so... I take a lot of their money, though. <laughs> that is fair. <laughs> Way fair. more than the price of a t-shirt. What do you guys I'm think gonna, of the cargo you, decks? You give me four hundred thousand dollars, and I'll give you a t-shirt. Let's do it. I mean, not that much. <laughs> um, About fifteen hundred bucks. That's what I. I uh, uh, t-shirts. So I just wanted to quickly mention one of the things that that they're realizing uh, about fire in zero gravity is it's very orb-like because Ooh. it's not the way that fire is shaped on the ground is mostly because of gravity and the way air moves, and it just doesn't move like that at all in zero g. So I'm hey, I'm real really, quick before really we talk about this cargo that. space. Um, you know those texture spheres that are on the ground. I want yeah. CIG to just have like a Vanta black texture sphere somewhere in the verse <laughs> to freak everybody out. <laughs> just a like... perfect sphere. <laughs> I want it. I want it so badly. It's it's scary. <laughs> Listen, have you seen or read sphere? Uh, I've seen sphere. And haven't read it's it yet. It's terrifying. Yeah, I don't like it, but I do like it. I'd rather they. I'd rather it be more in the in the lines of a uh, what, uh, what's it called? It's not a Dyson sphere. Crap! What's that guy's name? I don't know what you're talking about. So it's hard. I don't know what you're the about. the spheres that that you build around an entire sun to just capture. That is the Dyson. Dyson. It is a Dyson, Dyson sphere. sphere. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Freeman want, Dyson. I, he actually, uh, he. I think he just died recently. I want an amazing see, man. I want to see some Dyson what spheres. Do you think a Dyson sphere was something that they built it's around a, a planet and hoovered up all the debris and shit? Well, I, I was like Dyson, but isn't that the guy that makes the vacuums with a sphere in them? 
Or did Dyson just really yeah, like spears? That's why they called it that, you dumb dumb. Yeah. It's fair. Also, uh, the Dyson spheres were in. There's a Dyson sphere in Star Trek: The Next Generation. There is, which I know. came awesome. out way before the vacuum did. Uh, the sea looks so pretty now. Just, just to be clear, right now, um, so. Dyson sphere is named after the man who came up with the idea. Who his name is Freeman Dyson. Right. Um, he is. He was. Sorry, I think he. Yeah, he just died like three months ago. Really? Um, he was 96. Um, but yeah, he's a theoretical like physicist to me. and uh, a mathematician. And he is amazing. Or was amazing, sorry. Yep. But yeah. Uh, anyway. Hey, you know what we can do? You know what video game we can thank Mr. Dyson for? A Halo. lot of them. Halo? Oh, cool. Kind of like yeah, that's the whole that's a good point. concept of, of Halo. I thought Halo was more uh, Ringworld. Well, it it's, is. But... It's both, actually. So, because they do harness the power of uh, stars to oh, work okay. as as a weapon rather than uh, to. So David's getting way ahead of me here. I got I got two comments. Go. You good? Okay. First of all, the cargo things are really oh, really on cargo cool okay. and first of all they're cool and second of all um i think they're really important in just the way the game is going to work and play yep. um i think those cargo locations are going to be huge hubs of activity which is why they're like we're going to put them in orbit of planets we're going to put them in like space stations lagrange points everywhere all over the place um and uh shiver you've gone so far away yeah. Why have you moved away, Shiver? I was Social relaxing. distancing? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shiver, what do you um, think of the ocean? And I just wanted to mention, I I think the oceans look good. I think they can get better, but they're pretty good. Anyway, go for, go for it, Shiver. I, I really like the water in this game. Uh, water is one of those things that... Okay, ignore me. Who gives a shit? Look how adorable that fucking baby is. <laughs> his face his his face is becoming progressively less uh alien baby like he's a boy yeah like he's a boy. forget you you see it now before he was some weird demon spawn <laughs> but all all babies under six months look like weird demon spawn all of them I don't care. You might think you have the most beautiful newborn in the world. Still looks like alien demon spawn. It's true. Yep. All of he them. He looks like a boy now, though. Every yes, single one of them. He yep. is eight months old today. Happy m eight month, month day. anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> month uh, and and the last thing I want to talk about. Happy two thirds day. Uh, so I just wanted to mention one more thing about the oceans there. Oh, okay. Quickly. Sorry. Um, I really do like that they're immediately making them dynamic and that they uh, react to wind speed and change wave height and everything depending on wind speed. Anyway. Ah! Ah! Uh, you know what game has really good water? Um, yes. Um, Assassin's Creed oh, 4 Black Flag. Sea of Thieves. Uh, you know what game has even better water? Sea of Thieves. Uh, no, actually. Sea of Thieves has good water, but you can't see through it. It's true. Um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, in fact, has oh, sure. my favorite water in any video game ever. So much so that I unfortunately have to turn it down in order to achieve 60 frames per second <laughs> in while playing uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, yep, the water and the volumetric clouds in that game will just light your computer on fire come to find out so uh yeah I'm, I'm sad about it but i'm happy that it exists mm -hmm. you know what they need to fix though and i, I don't have you, and tell me if you've seen a uh, solution to this because i haven't seen one um they have a big problem with waterfalls making them look right it's hard um, 
it's really hard and it i haven't seen a game that actually does it in a Me way either. that looks right we'll get it there. looks it always looks wrong i mean you've got you've got two approaches to it you can use actual attempts at fluid dynamics in the game to have the game try and render it and then it looks like complete shit but at least when you walk under it it acts like a waterfall, but it looks like complete shit. And you've probably got to have a tiny, 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 tiny little one because that's going to burn your PC. Or yeah, to you the can ground. just have a pre-made texture that's a, basically a video of a waterfall, in essence, that someone's made and comes down, which looks nice, great, but then you're probably not going to be able to let your players go anywhere near it because it's not mm -hmm. going to interact with them or react to them in any way, shape, or form. And, and it'll be too, it like too low resolution, yeah. Uh, looking at you, Tomb Raider, you have beautiful waterfalls that I can't go anywhere near. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we did it! Uh, players can't come anywhere near it. Hey, uh, right. speaking of Tomb Raider, um, Tomb Raider, you, you are the one who did this first. At least it's the first game that I can remember that did this. Um, hey, game developers... We're getting new fancy SSD technology coming up very soon. Can we just stop with the walking through, shimmying through tight canyons? I'm done with it. Yep. I know what you're doing. Stop it. Everybody did it. Everyone. <laughs> if you made the third person action adventure game, you used this. I'm mm -hmm. done with it. We all see what you did. Look, uh, um, what, what needs what literally it's like, needs to happen? It's like the Dutch angle of video games. <laughs> what what literally needs to happen is some games have to start saying no. SSD is required. Period. I mean, that's going to happen with this new generation. I know, and it, yeah, it needs to. Yeah. Like, hard drives need to die. Yep. Goodbye, platters. Um, yeah, that's bullshit, and obviously you have no idea what you're talking about, mate. There is always going to be a space for a oh, no, no. drive. Sorry, sorry. There, there is a space. Where sorry, am I going to put my six terabyte drive for storage? I know. No, no, no. No, uh, I agree with for, you. I mean for games. Like, it has no, to die game, as a... Okay, yeah, yeah. Completely different kettle yeah. of fish. Yeah. I, all of my, I all of my movies, tell you this, all of my the movies are on platter. get that of essence on PC, yeah. like the canyon loading screens, is because of consoles. PC oh, yeah. but, con but consoles, RAM where consoles this gen are going RAM, SSD. Load it through, it wouldn't be an issue. Consoles That's this why I'm gen are going very SSD, excited right? for the new generation of consoles, which, which are means, doing away with it. Which means that it will no longer we're be... getting direct storage, which is really exciting. Yeah. It's a really exciting piece of technology, and I can't it's wait for it to get PC. Thing is, is, it's good for consoles, PC's but it's also it since ever. It's good for uh, consoles, it has but it's also really good for PC. No, it's called RAM. Right, but I'm saying you don't need extra hardware for it anymore. Is, is, no, it's got nothing the... to do with that. The, it, it, it's the way that the game has been made with right. consoles in mind, because consoles can't do that, whereas the PC has, in theory, yeah. always been able to do it. Just shove it in the RAM. No, I agree you with you. don't need to worry yeah. about it. And with the, with, current, with the current so gen of consoles... Have got, you know, PC tech. Yeah, cool. Yeah. The, the, the current the next gen of consoles is going to change how pc game how games are made because games changing the lowest be made... common denominator yeah um, it's, for the it, first time in probably 12 or 15 years it's I huge would say. it's it's really yeah. really good um, um okay it, what, is this that we're, what is this that we're what is this what are we showing what, on screen right now? Because I have no idea. I didn't get to see this. What we're showing on screen is uh they designed a noodle delivery truck it's literally it's, what you've been asking yes, for for years. I know, and they designed it, and then Disco posted on Twitter saying, "Haha, you can't have it." Yeah, we can. It's, just it yell is, loud enough, you just yell loud they, enough, and they'll put they it into designed, game. <laughs> they designed exactly. They the said ship. we were never going to get space whales, David. I know, I know, <laughs> I, but I'm not going to stop. Don't worry, it's me. I'm not going to stop yelling for it. What we need is a food delivery truck in space, and we're gonna get one, an anvil, an anvil food delivery truck partnership with uh, Benny's delivery of noodles. It, it, it's perfect. Okay, uh, we should we should do we have any questions? 
I've, I've got a baby in my hand. Probably. So the answer is probably. We have, we have four questions. We could oh, use that's... more than four questions. We could use more than four questions. Or I could just put this baby on screen and, and we could be done. Okay. No, because um, David's going to start singing and we can't have that. No. Um, we should talk about the roadmap briefly. Uh, oh, yeah. I Actually, have, yeah. You, don't, only, you, you really don't want to see... You really don't want to hear the songs I sing to Link. Uh, no. Oh, God. No, we don't. Um, uh, okay. Occupy yourselves for two seconds. I got to go put him away uh, so that I... Oh, wait. Let's just put him on the ground. All right, Shiver, you sing us a song. <laughs> Give me a second. Probably just as bad, if not worse, than I was doing it. Uh, and you want Fair this. Enough. Shiver just starts going. Done. 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 Oh my god, it's so big. Oh my. Yeah, sorry, it's Look very high shirt. resolution. Look at Shiver's shirt right now. It's awesome. He's not going to sing. He's going to growl at you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the highest of resolutions. Oh, it's also so wide. Like, what am I supposed yeah, to no. do with this? Whatever. Uh, I don't care about that. Do, like, do the cut, off, cut off with the this, right side of it. You don't better. need that. <laughs> Girth is more important. <laughs> okay, there you go. Now, there where's that go. baby? Oh, oh man. he's right behind me. All right. Um, Let's go. They've added <sighs> a lot of stuff to this thing. Um, really good. I want to point out right away because it's really cool and I've been waiting for it for a long time. The Origin 100 series is actually coming to the yep. game uh, in 3.11. Um, they've been around for a very long time and hardly anyone to. ever talks about those ships. I want one really badly. Um, um, I'm going to try and figure out when were they introduced? I want... so. So this is this is what I want because I love origin ships dearly, uh, like they they look so cool. Um, second favorite manufacturer in my humblest opinion. Number one is Crusader. Um, um, I want them to make a ship that is equivalent to the Pisces, so I can put it on my eight ninety jump and or my six hundred I. Yeah. Okay. So. The Origin 100 series has been around for about a little over two years. And yeah. uh, I am excited to see them in the game. Um, I'm glad that the M50 is getting some love. Um, it's needed it she's for a very old years. ship. Yep. Um, it's probably the oldest ship in the game now. It's got to be up there. What do you think, Shiver? Is it, it's got to be close, eh? No, it can't be any. It can't be older than like the 350. But the, the 300 series they just got a rework. A, yeah, they just like got the rework, year. though. So they're completely I mean, different. On the three oldest ships, the Aurora, the Hornet, and the 300. Yeah, but we, we mean like in terms of... All three like, of those got reworks. The M50 is still the original Oh, you mean model. in terms of reworks? Yeah. yeah. Gladiator. I'm, I'm talking like the oldest oh, the model in the game. The Gladiator is pretty freaking old, too, because everyone forgot it existed. Oh, I... I <laughs> I forgot it yeah. existed too, but I love that chip. I was I just gonna say it. I love the Gladiator chip, and at some point they're gonna have to redo it because it was a, whole, a total mess in terms of the physics. Of the game. So, <laughs> Retaliator and The eighty-five X exists, but I want it to have a fat butt like the Pisces, so I can put stuff in it. The Freelancer okay. never got an actual rework. It wasn't a rework. They didn't change anything. And the tally really, How did we really get in the Freelancer topic again? <laughs> it needs a rework! We're not talking about the Freelancer! You were talking We're about oldest about ships. the oldest in-game ship model. It's not the Freelancer by a <laughs> long shot. Tally. It's the M50. Probably. Or the Gladiator. It's probably the M50. The M50... Has Everything else has gotten since, a rework. Since, like, the what original the Arena Commander. Ship? Um, there are comedies. Oh, the Argo. M50 is no. older than the Argo. M50 is older than the Argo, yeah, because Argo, was, uh, the M50 was a, in the original. That was like Commander. a 1.0. Okay, I'm moving yeah. to the song because we got to um, cover, so we got to go through we, this uh, and then we got questions. So, um, the NPC improvements for the bartenders are back on the schedule. Um, yep. 
and electron damage, which you saw with the lightning guns and everything, is uh, 92% complete and uh, coming in shortly. Um, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure that's just... Oh, no, this, the electron sniper rifle is there. Okay, so they will actually... You'll actually see those in 3.1. Um, more improvements to turret and gunnery. Um, I like how we're calling it 3.1. Uh, sorry, 3.1. Oh, my bad. 3.10. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh no. It's very silly. It's okay. It's very silly. I'm not sure oh, if no. it's a freelancer or a cutlass. <laughs> David! <laughs> it's a cutlancer. Hey, it's a cutlancer. There David, we go. David, if they put this huh? ship in the game and call it something else other than the freelancer, will you be happy? Yeah, I'll buy it. Cool. And you, you'll That's never be allowed to fly anything else. <laughs> I'll call it the moose knuckle. I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear all right shall uh, we go with questions guys? and this is one of the original concepts for the freelancer actually yes it was this was one of the original you can choices see it. you can see the freelancer you see it yep. yeah yeah the, the front is there the back is there just something's going on in the middle <laughs> <laughs> absolute beauty oh, is happening reference. in the middle <laughs> Um, I have a question. Is you see that engine that's just kind of taped on? <laughs> it's just like hanging out over here. Well, that's actually so, no, no, because it, it's interesting because uh, that engine would would go away. Is but there that another engine, one on the other side? Yeah, there would be another one on the other side. But that engine yeah. is something that was lost from the Freelancer because remember the Freelancer when they originally described it, it was supposed to be using Xeon tech, and part of that Xeon tech was engines that rotate. But they got rid of it because they decided that the missile launchers were on the engines, and you couldn't have missile launchers on an engine that rotated. So they got rid of the rotating engines, which got rid of the I'm entire, interested. which got rid of the entire Misk and Xeon. Uh, collaboration, which meant that there was no Xeon tech in the Freelancer, which means that the Freelancer needs a rework to reintegrate some Xeon tech into the original design to actually... Hey, the Cutlass people bitched for years and finally got exactly <laughs> what they wanted. I want my Freelancer rework. <laughs> All right. Your Freelancer. My Freelancer. Hey, would you be okay if it had rotating engines but wasn't asymmetrical like this? Uh yeah, this isn't asymmetrical. It's it's symmetrical widthwise. Are the so, is that gun directly below the cockpit? No, no. There's two. There's one on each side. Mm, if the I don't the know about that. No, no. Guaranteed. The perspective is slightly off, but there's one gun on each side. That that little under thing is right. is um uh it's. What the word you said that I symmetrical? It's symmetrical. Chicken nuggets. It's supposed to be symmetrical. It just it was drawn a long time ago. Anyway, huh. uh, inquiring, my, inquiring minds want to know. I've noticed sometimes you have two heiresses on the show. Is that to make up for sometimes like last week where you have no heiresses on the show? Yeah, I was on last week. Yes. Um, Hermes he asks. Hermes asks, in which patch? comes the brightness correction thingy and i don't actually know wait wait, wait. hang on guns um, and glue guns and glue says get in line behind the redeemer owners at least the freelancer is flyable wait does anyone still own a redeemer yes, yes. wow and they're actually Many working on it is. now yeah they're actually we working might, on we it we might see the and, redeemer this year and based on the model that we saw in invictus launch week it is keeping the hair curlers it better keep the hair yeah. curlers they were the only <laughs> good thing about that ship everything else is ugly the hair curlers well. were great <laughs> so uh Hermes asked, so he asked which patch the brightness correction thing it's comes in one. i know they're doing it and we saw it and i don't know when it's coming into the game could that be in 3.10 part of the ship HUD rework? Very possibly. Very possibly. I'm hoping that's where it is. Um, I'll go back and watch that episode and I'll, I'll uh, comment in um, the Relay Discord and see if there's any hint there. But um, I, we definitely need that really badly because there are some places where you're flying and you're like, I can't see my HUD yeah. <laughs> at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a confused Murican asks... 
How did Canadians hmm. on the show get the tops of their heads to stop flapping? It can't be the headphones because the ears are connected to the top fart. Um, screws. The top fart. The top fart. Screws. Robertson screws. Yep. Robertson. Always Robertson. Robertson are the best screws. And I, I'm very sorry for everywhere in the world that doesn't have Robertson screws. Genuinely sorry. All right. We got Agro Knuckle up next. Agro Knuckle asks... Could one of you reiterate on what is the actual difficulty of realizing big ships in Star Citizen performance-wise? Depends on the ship. Uh, for something for something like the Hull E, uh, the problem is a physics grid. Mm -hmm. They still ha they haven't quite figured out the letting it get bigger and not. Performance-wise, yes. you've got whenever you look at something in a game, it's made up of many different other smaller things to be part of the whole pixels now each one has to be rendered in real time obviously and moved along say you've got something like a bengal fucking carrier that's a lot of pixels to be rendered and the way that star citizen wants to do it is that if you pass a window you can see inside of the ship so even though you might not be able to see it technically the inside of the ship would have to be rendered as well that's a hell of a lot of drain on your system that's just for one fucking ship it's also got to calculate what's going on your movement your ship the inside of your ship what they're trying to do to combat that in star citizen is rather than actually have to say as a traditional game have all this is on screen this is what needs to be loaded this is what needs to be displayed even if you're not fucking looking at it because you could look at it at any point they're saying with the physics grids there's this in this grid here that's going to give access to this small compartment here. Okay, so I only need to render that small compartment there. I might only need to render the outside of the Bengal carrier. Well, there's different ways that you can do that. One of the ways that developers can cheat the system is by instead of having, when they make the Bengal carrier, make it up of millions of things, they'll stick it in um, uh, something like Maya, put it in that, and then render it as effectively as far as the game engine is concerned as one big blob rather mm -hmm. than all the different blobs that made into it so effectively that is a one texture one let's do this with one textured object that it only has to render that one time at different various angles rather than being a, a, the great the smaller parts that make up part of the greater whole and the physics grids are the ones that are saying, well, you only need to see this bit, so we're only going to render that bit. You only need to know about this bit, so we're only going to render that bit. Then you've got OCS, which is the bit where it says, well, you're only in this bubble, so to speak. So you only need the direct information about what's affecting you going on around you within this bubble. Everything else we don't need to necessarily render. We can just have the mathematical equations because at the end of the day, that's all the game is, is a shitload of mathematical equations. We can just have those mathematical equations which are much less of a drain on any system going on in the background. We don't even necessarily need your client to actually be doing them. We just need to be sending you these small packets of data, which are tiny and significant packets of data, compared with, say, a picture of a fucking Bengal carrier, which is many mm. multi megabytes or gigabytes. And it, it's making you aware of only the things that you need to know. So basically what it comes down to is the bigger the object, the more objects there are, bigger information bigger information packet that makes that make pc go bad smaller information less packets even if you don't need to render it is all it needs to be is information pc like that hey guys also, shiver, wo now. shiver woke up sock he did <laughs> also also part Socks. of the problem part of the problem here too was actually on the server side for a long time because the server unlike your computer didn't need to know everything at all times the server does need to know everything at all times and has to have everything loaded all the time so that it keep, can keep track of all of it. And at least up until recently, it had to do that. And that meant that every time a new large ship was loaded into the game, the whole server went for a little while. <laughs> the other, I remember. You, and you the, other, the other part of the problem here... When they put here, the in the game, that's what happened. The other, <laughs> yeah. the other performance problem here is that... Uh, all of their artists are slacking, uh, their performance is bad, and they are not creating large ships fast enough, which is why we can't get our large ships like the Endeavor developed anytime soon and then put in the game. It's because of poor artist performance. 
you do realize we just lost every CIG <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway. Um, um, <laughs> Guns and Glue, Guns and Glue. Uh, asks, with mining being the key mechanic being developed, will the mining rover from Last Citizen Con make an appearance anytime soon, and will it be useful or a gimmicky ground vehicle? Uh, maybe so, do both. Maybe, probably, and probably not. There you go. Hey, All right. guess what? There's, uh, like, like, w- Think, think about all the weird vehicles that exist in the world right now. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> like on planet Earth. Yeah, I got some <laughs> of mine. There's a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's that? The the Robin? The Reliant Robin? Is it uh, Reliant? Reliant? You know those, you know those bicycles Robin that have Reliant. those really big Robin wheels? Reliant. Like okay, yeah. one really mm-hmm. big wheel and one really tiny wheel? Well, mm-hmm. those, those were actually because they didn't have uh, uh, gears yet. I know. Yeah. They still exist and people ride them. Yeah. Those people, <laughs> those people are, okay, Jake, those people are trying way too hard. Uh-huh. <laughs> Admit it. You want one, don't you? And you would drive one. Uh, to be honest, uh, I've, I've had the handed down to me, truck. I've had handed down to me a racing tricycle. Uh-huh. Which I'm I plan on fixing up and riding. My point is <laughs> there's weird stuff in real life that are super gimmicky and dumb. Why wouldn't there be that in Star Citizen? There's also really weird looking vehicles that are incredibly useful in real life that everyone like ninety nine percent of the world looks at it and goes, I have no idea what the hell that thing's for. Uh look look up an ape truck. Literally, look up the ape truck. truck. Ape trucks are used all over Italy and probably lots of the rest of Europe as well. They are, they are ubiquitous. It's a good word. They're they're weird, but ape trucks are everywhere because they've got smaller roads and you need to make deliveries up small mountain roads, right? Like that's how you do it. Weird, weird vehicles. Um, Okay, Uh, where were we? Uh, something, something, something dark side. Uh, isn't Jake a little too old to go emo? <laughs> dude, this is called quarantine haircut, dude. <laughs> I haven't had my hair cut in like six months. I'm not sure how many people here, uh, watch, also, uh, I'm dude, sure. do you know, like, what the actual emo aesthetic is? I would have to, one, dye it black plus a neon color. I would have to straighten it, and I'd have to cut a bunch of layers into it. This is this is not emo. This is called lazy. <laughs> That's also, that is true. I'm not sure how many people have noticed. Um, I'm I'm sure a lot of people here watch uh, Linus Tech Tips. Um, Linus has literally turned into Marshall Mathers. Yep. Um, and it is quite entertaining to watch. <laughs> Eric, can you, uh, do, can you ask the next question? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, hashtag not my freelancer asks, why are Robertson screws the best screws? Okay, so. Oh, God. Can I can I quickly answer this um, in my way? Sure. I'm just, here are the different types of screws <laughs> on screen now. Um, there you go. Torx are stupid because nobody has a damn Torx screwdriver and no, no one uses a damn Torx, Torx screwdriver. Uh, <laughs> slotted are ass because he can't get it to stick in. Uh, pause yep. a driv, what? Um, that's just like a, <laughs> ha- that is that is literally a half-assed wannabe Phillips. Uh, Phillips is the American standard um, they're ass. They strip it is, really easily. I agree with you. I'd rather have a flathead screwdriver Phillips strip so easily. Allen, same thing as Torx. No one has an Allen screwdriver. For for I do. A, they're they're useless. And also, you very rarely no. see Allen screws outside of IKEA. Yeah. Um, uh, Robertson or there. Electronics. Yeah, Robertson there though. Robertson is the the strongest of the screws. It is the hardest to strip. It's basically two triangles, and as we should all know, 
triangles are the strongest shape, right? None of these other screws use triangles. Robertson is two, two triangles. It is the strongest screw. It has the least chance of stripping and that makes it the best screw. Go ahead, Eric. No, can I, can yeah. I answer? Uh, yeah, it's also, it's also a very clever way for Canadians to very passive aggressively piss off their American counterparts by putting thousands of Robertson screws into everything we make and then yeah. sending them to the US where they have no Robertson screwdrivers. It's true. Robertson is a king. This, this happens all the time. <laughs> I got one because I have an iFixit toolkit and they awesome. are the best toolkits in the world. Uh, please, uh, if you work on any sort of PC or literally anything where you have to screw things in or out, yeah, uh, get an iFixit toolkit. They're like 80 bucks and they have everything you would ever need ever 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 cool yeah uh next question yeah um scavian asks it seems like crg are moving away from modular really okay uh moving away from modularity with the field upgrade kits it? oh thank you field upgrade kits and stuff uh how do you think this is going to affect the vanguard owners with field upgrade kits you just want me to say fox um anyway <laughs> well, quite clearly anymore. they have no fucks to give um how's this going to affect vanguard owners with fuks or tally owners how do you think it will affect the endeavor in the future i actually don't think they're moving away from modularity personally i think it depends on the ship they've got ships that require modularity and ships that don't unfortunately they to be honest haven't made a ship that requires modularity in a while, but I expect to see some at some point. It's just all they've really been making for a long time are really specific, uh, like little tiny ass military uh, fighters and the, shit. The Carrick, the Carrick is modular. Yeah, the Carrick's modular. They they designed more modular further back. They haven't designed Yo, as many yeah. new modular. I think ships. they got. I think they realized that they were doing it way too much. Because yes. I think there's a lot more work that goes into a modular ship than into a non-modular ship. So, like, for example, like, the Caterpillar is going to take them literally the next seven years. Well, and that's <laughs> that's part of the reason the Endeavor is so <laughs> far away, right? Is because it's so modular, it's going to take them you're literally forever. Like, you're designing, like, nine ships for the Endeavor. <laughs> yeah. Endeavor is the best best value to ship in the game because you get especially if you got it originally when it wasn't ridiculously expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was even really it was, it was, it was expensive stupid then, expensive even then. But it's but... now it's really really expensive and it's only going to get more expensive. Yeah, because um, it's in no and it's going to get so much bigger. It's going to be massive. It's yeah. going to be like the size of it's going to be like the size of Port Olisar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are uh, we are reaching the end times. Uh oh. Well, yeah, oh, that's pretty no. much what this year is. Uh, uh, we we are we, we not only not only are we reaching the end times for this show, we are living in the end times. Um, yes. So do it, David. Do it. I'm gonna say something. This is something that I said on Tuesday. Um, there's we, more we, of you here now. There are more people here. Uh, we have started a new show on Tuesdays. It's just general gaming news. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm excited to do another one. But yeah. this last... Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. There you Join go. Us. Uh, but this last uh, Tuesday, we did not hold a show. We simply <laughs> had this statement, and then we went off the air. Because... Um, at the time, and honestly, even still now, the things that we're saying don't really matter all that much. Uh, there's a lot more going on in the world, and there's a lot more that uh, we think matters more than, than video games, quite frankly. Um, so here we go. Uh, now is not the time to sit idly by. It's not the time to grouse, to complain, it's not the time for us to ignore the world around us. We don't get to say all lives matter when we are not getting shot at for kneeling or knelt on until we die. If you are able to go out, please do so. Protest peacefully, but make a difference. If you are not able to go out, donate.
there are so many people being arrested right now in the United States being hurt and they need support. They need our support. Um, and I'm sorry here for just a second. I'm going to get angry. Um, I don't know how else to put this, but the president of the United States is using the military to attack peaceful protesters and journalists and is essentially taking a gigantic syphilitic shit on the rights that America is supposed to hold so dear. The right to assembly, the right to freedom of the press, the First Amendment. Um, I'm not going to mince fucking words. Uh, this is how we got Mussolini. This is how we got goddamn Hitler. This is fascism right now in the streets of America. And this is, this is the legacy of the moment. This is your legacy. This is our legacy. Fascism. But it can change. So, please, stand up, protest, don't loot, support the Black Lives Matter movement, don't riot, stand arm in arm with brothers and sister, sisters united against racism, against hatred, against bigotry and brutality. Do not blindly trust police, do not blindly trust politicians, and most of all, Stand up for what's right and stay safe. Uh, much like on Tuesday as Relay, we have two things to say here specifically. Uh, number one is if you wish to help in some way and you don't know how, um, please send me uh, personally a message um, with both uh, what, how, how you want to help as well as uh, where you're located in the United States, and I can point you to something local where you can uh, make the most effective change uh, happen. Um, so please absolutely reach out. That's what I'm here for. I have all those resources ready. Um, please let me know um, how you want to help, and I can help you direct that into the right place. Uh, number two, as uh, the community manager of Relay, if you... Uh, take offense to anything that we're saying or if you um disagree with what like what this movement is uh you are not welcome here uh please leave this is the largest civil rights movement in human history be on the right side Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. We hope to see you Tuesday. We hope to see you next Saturday. But most of all, stay safe. Yep, stay safe. We'll see you next week. Uh, come back on Tuesday, 9 p.m.